Well, good morning, online family. It's lovely to have you with us this morning. Hope you're doing well. We've just been sharing a bit about the weather and our gratefulness to God in such circumstances. Thanks for joining us and sing along with our next song, which is In the Secret, In the Quiet Place, In the Stillness, You Are There. waited upon as our offering is received. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the offerings that have been given this morning. We pray an abundant blessing be poured out upon it and may it be used for your kingdom in this place. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, 
each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading this morning. Well, here we are, and good morning again online. The fourth week of our God is series. Today we're looking at God is holiness. Do you remember the other ones that we've looked at? I feel like if I can remember last week's, what was that, was I? Is trustworthy. God is merciful. God is trustworthy. God is loving. And today, God is holiness. God is holiness. This is a concept we are familiar with, being a holiness movement. But maybe today the Spirit will teach our hearts a new thing about the holiness of God. The holiness of God is mentioned in Scripture 637 times. So it's kind of double do not be afraid, sort of if your maths is very bad. Today we looked at Isaiah. Isaiah 6, which I've just read for us, is a beautiful description of the holiness power. The context was this. Isaiah said that it was the year that King Uzziah died. You may not know much about Uzziah, I certainly didn't, but he actually started to reign when he was 16 years old. Imagine a 16-year-old being the king or the queen as my own 16-year-old just walked through the door. A 16-year-old being in charge of an entire land. He was 16 and he was the king for 52 years. So as you can imagine, when he died, the people felt unstable, unsteady, And a bit lost, perhaps. When the prophet says this was the king, this was the year King Uzziah died, he could have also said this was the end of an era. Because once a new king was in place, things would be different, things would change. This was an anxious time for the people. It was a season where they felt scared. They'd had 52 years of security under King Uzziah and now they had no idea what would happen. So much was going on in their world and they were experiencing turmoil and tension and anxiety, all the things we are familiar with. They were also familiar with them back then. I imagine it was a bit like when um, Queen Victoria died. She had served for so long and things were status quo for such a long time and then she died and the people became unstable. It was, this, it was during this time of unsettled, unsettledness that the prophet saw the Lord high and lifted up. He'd had a vision, high and lifted up, seated on a throne and his robes filled the entire temple. And the scripture says, above him were six winged creatures called seraphim that were worshipping God. The seraphs were actually singing Kadosh, 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 which means holy, holy, holy. Repeating something for emphasis is very common. It's common in scripture, it's common today. How many times do you repeat yourself to a child? How many times do you repeat yourself just for emphasis? Just so your point gets across. It must be repeated. We have to repeat it so what we have said will be remembered. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The practice of repeating oneself for emphasis is very common in Hebrew language. Hence, God is referred to as holy, holy, holy. Not just he is holy, but he's holy, holy, holy. This is the highest praise that you can be given. We never read in scripture, mercy, mercy, mercy is the Lord. Or justice, justice, justice is the Lord. 
those things don't happen. To be holy and repeated is the highest praise. In today's culture, the word holy has a rather watered down meaning. It's broadly used in formal settings such as Holy Communion, Holy Matrimony, Holy Ghost and Holy Grail. And on a less formal note, we have Holy Cow, Holy Moly, Holy Smoke. Anyone want to contribute a holy? Holy Toledo, (laughs) Batman, because you have to say the Batman bit, Holy Toledo. Any other holies out there? If, you wanna, if you're online and you want to put a holy in there. Oh, we've got laughing in the back. I'm loving today. <clears throat> One of my favourites that I use quite often is Holy Moses. I don't even know where I heard it or how I concocted that. But I imagine he was kind of holy, doing things. So we haven't missed any? Have you ever heard someone say, holy hell? I have. It's weird, isn't it? The two things don't go together. But anyway. Then we have the negative twist that people put on the word to describe Jesus' followers. Have you ever been called a holy roller? I have, but because I was young and I didn't understand it, it was water off a duck's back. Any other holy roller comments have been passed your way? When we are attributing the word holy to God, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? Well, holiness actually means to be separated, set apart, not the same as everybody else. And from the Hebrew, it actually literally translates a cut above. And when I read that, I'm like, that is fantastic. We always use that. Always a bit of a cut above, isn't he? It means somebody who is better. And of course, our God is a cut above the rest of us. He is our God. Does anyone have in your possession or grew up with everyday dishes and special dishes? Get a few nods. I grew up with just everyday dishes. But I do know that everyday dishes and special dishes are kept separately You don't mix the two and special dishes go in a special cupboard and only pulled out for special guests, whereas everyday dishes are what you eat off every day. So um, so the saying describes. Who can remember the most important company that they had and the special dishes were used? Ah, oh, yeah. When we went to the governor's house, and those of you that have been there, the dishes are special, and I don't think they're used every day. These special plates and cups and saucers and bread and butter plates are separated, highly exalted, and lifted up and put away. An entire dinner set. You might say these aren't holy, but they are definitely set apart. But you see my point. God is holy and set apart. Set apart from what? Well, everything. He is set apart from everything. Jesus is with us. Jesus was sent to walk with us. His spirit was sent to guide us, but God is set apart. He set apart from everything, from everyone that's ever been created. Our God is set apart, yet our God is with us, which is the magnificent part about a holy God. In Exodus, the question is asked, who among you is like God? Who, is, who among you is majestic in holiness? Well, I'm sorry, church, but we are none of us like God. We are not set apart. 
We are called to this earth to serve our fellow men. God, he is completely, thoroughly, fully, entirely holy because God is holiness. He's not just holy, he is holiness. His entire being is made up of holiness. He is all good and pure and righteous and perfect without fault, without blemish. He is infinite, he is immeasurable, he is incomprehensible. Who out there is like our God? Our God speaks, our God moves. Our God is trustworthy, our God is lovely, our God is merciful. You have to understand that he is set apart to understand that he is with us, which is a contradiction in terms, I realise that. He is different. He is self-existent. He is self-sufficient. And he is all wisdom. And wisdom that he didn't have to learn, unlike our own wisdom. God has strength that he didn't need to earn. God has a love that he didn't have to receive in order to give love. He is the God who was, the God who is, and the God who is to come. When he comes, we will be set apart with him. And we look forward to that day. And in the year that King Uzziah died and everyone was unsettled, the prophet of God saw the Lord high and lifted up. And in the presence of God, Isaiah cried out, Woe to me, I am ruined. Here's this man, he's in the face of God. All of his sins have come to his mind and he is confessing. Woe is me, I am ruined. <clears throat> For he was a man of unclean lips and he lived among a people of unclean lips. Then one of the seraphim flew to him with a live coal in his hand. Don't worry about the seraphim because they are made of fire so that the coal is okay. He had taken it with the tongs of the altar and with it he touched Isaiah's mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Isaiah then didn't join in worship with them. He, he was there still in front of the God that he had seen high and lifted up. But what he did do was continue to confess, woe is me, a sinner. God did not wrestle a confession out of Isaiah. God just was. He was just present. He was just holy. And his presence alone was enough to convict Isaiah. And his confession came tumbling out. When Isaiah said, I am a man of unclean lips, he's confessing to using the gift God gave him falsely, wrongly, not in the way that he was meant to. He was using his gift negatively. He realised he isn't living the best that God had offered him. He wasn't representing God the best way he could. Isaiah didn't blame anyone else for his shortcomings. No excuses he just owned his sin and confessed it. It was God who initiated the forgiveness. God sent the seraph with the coal. God said, your guilt is taken away. God initiated because God is good, because God is holy, because God is our Father. He initiates atonement for the same reasons. God initiated the atonement with Isaiah the same way atonement is initiated for us in the New Testament, Romans 8, 28. Oh, sorry, that's a different verse. Romans 5, 8 says, While we were still sinners, so before we knew God, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You don't have to have your sins forgiven for Christ to die for you. That's done. That's over. 
we were atoned while we were still sinners. Our God is holy, holy, holy. There is no one like him. Have a little think now. When is the last time you were so stunned by the holiness of God who is set apart? Have a moment. And yet when you didn't deserve that holiness, he sent Jesus for you anyway. When your soul is confronted with the holiness of God, all you can do is say, yes, Lord. So this is Isaiah. Now one chapter later, this man was prophesying 700 years before the birth of Christ. He is the prophet who declared the coming of our Lord through the Virgin Mary. This man, this sinful prophet, forgiven and atoned before God, he told the world that the Saviour was coming. Whether they believed him or not was up to them. He had done what, what God had asked him and instructed him to do. He began leading the way that Christ would come into the world. It is Jesus, the vine, the good shepherd, the Lamb of God. This is the door through which we enter. This is the man who laid down his life that we could also be forgiven. This is God. Holy, holy, holy in the flesh, Jesus. I for one am thankful for a saviour who didn't come for the righteous but came for those with unclean lips. He came for the unholy, the sick in spirit. He came for us. And this is why we stay with our Jesus. And this is why we understand the holiness of God. Because we have never been loved like this before. We will never be loved like this again. This is our place to be loved. This is our God. Who can compare to our God? There are many gods, many gods. People will worship anything. But this is our God, our God who lives, our God who rescues us from ourselves, our God who can heal us. Who else can redeem us and forgive us? Who else can comfort us and never leave us? Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Holy, holy, holy is our God. So as the team comes and plays this morning, I want us to take the song and take a moment and ask yourself, when was the last time I truly encountered the greatness of the holiness of God? And if it's been a while, it doesn't have to be. God is always there. He is always present. Take a minute. Seek God out. See what he's got to say to you today.
choose to believe You're working in the waiting Though the future isn't clear to me I trust you take that understanding into our everyday. Keep reminding us that it is not us that comes to you, but you who seek us out, you who initiate forgiveness and atonement for us. And we thank you that your son came to do the same thing. But Lord, your holiness should make us tremble. Your holiness should make us want more of you. Lord, as we go into a new week granted by you, I pray that we will take every opportunity to seek your face, to find you high and lifted up, and to confess and then to worship. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. The announcements this morning, of which there are a couple, not many, the Owls weekend was washed out, but there are other weekends and we will invite Bayside back and we will have soup and slice and we will enjoy fellowship together. So it's not on yesterday, but it will be on in future weekends, but not next weekend because next weekend is our favourite Red Shield appeal. So thank you to those who have put their name down already and thank you for those who say to me, I'll just wait till the end and fill in the gaps. We're at the end. Come on down and fill in the gaps. And we are looking for a partner to sit with John Deeks on Saturday the 21st of May from 11 till 1. So I'm going to have these out the back. Go through them, see what dates you can do. The weekend ones are only for Shell Spa and the bakery at Arachula, every other day next, not this week coming, but the next one, is at IGA. So if there's any confusion about these, please come and talk to me about it. Don't just be confused and walk away. 
And as I always say, the more people on the roster, the less you have to work. So come on down and see me um, well, after this Red Shield appeal. Now, um, the 135th anniversary of Fasta Fern Area Salvation Army is coming up and it is the 4th and 5th of June. On the 4th of June, we will do some celebratory things outside the family store. So there's going to be live entertainment and I have it on good authority that George is singing there. So if you want to go and hear that, that's going to be there. There's going to be our band, which is awesome. We're going to play a couple of... We're going to play, listen to me. They're going to play. <laughs> we, want, we want Debbie playing, we don't. Um, we're going to have band, we're going to have um, Jared Robinson is going to come and he's going to play some stuff. I'm not sure what he's playing or who he's playing with. The Beasley girls are coming. So we've got a few different items up for listening to. There's going to be chairs for sitting down because it's going to be eating. Chairs are going to be there. Yes, indeed. <laughs> there's food, there's chairs. So for, the <laughs> so for the 135th anniversary, Elsa is seeking assistance with the food. She has a timetable up, out, a sign-on sheet, sorry, up in the next room. So please take a look at that and see where you can fill in to cook on the sausage sizzle and serve the drinks for that Saturday. Elsa? There is. So all of those jobs need to be done. Um, let's not leave it to the faithful few who hang around with Elsa, Alan. Let's, um, oh, and Les, okay, and Les. Let's all pitch in and make sure that the 135th anniversary is um, excellent and good for us all. The youth group are going to do face painting. So if you want to be Batman for the day, Spider-Man, I don't know what you, I don't know what you're going to do. There's, um, many options for face painting. So um, there's going to be a stall to tell the community what we're doing here at the Salvos. So things that we do throughout the week are going to be on display um, under the awning outside my office, you know, because it's rainy out here. So um, face painting, sausage sizzle, band, sitting down, Half price, half price at the shop for that week. Is it the week or just the Saturday? Oh, just the Saturday. Oh, that's right, we couldn't get that across the line if you're listening, Donna. Um, so for the Saturday, everything in the store is half price. So if you've had enough of sitting down and eating, you can go and have a half price bargain. Because, you know, half of a dollar is 50. Like, that's truly amazing. And then the Sunday, the 5th of June... Here at the church, we are having our guest speaker will be Ray Proud. It has been confirmed. He's going to come and be our guest speaker that day. So if you don't know Ray Proud, you are missing out. And if you do know Ray Proud and you like him, yay. And Revelation Big Band are going to come for the afternoon's entertainment. So it's a big weekend. This is our church's opportunity to celebrate being a Salvation Army presence in this community for 135 years and it's our opportunity to show the town that we are still here, we're still functioning, there are things going on, and they can get involved. So, if I've left anything out, speak now. We'd normally say a forever hodge piece, or, but I'm going to say, or if you remember later, tell me after meeting. Um, hmm. Oh, yes, sorry, I missed that one. Next week is, um, as I said, the Red Shield Appeal. So there is no Sunday service here. So if you're new to Sunday services, um, there is no Sunday service on Red Shield weekend. Some core do it. I just find it weird and uncontrollable chaos. So there is no Sunday service here next week. Georgia. Our oh, youth group is on tonight, 5 o'clock in the back hall. Um, is it Life Group? What is it? It's Life Group. So... Um, I understand we're having an amazing curry. Is this still true? Oh, still true. Um, is it coconut free? Just have to ask. I'll be having a wrap. <laughs> but the amazing curry will still be on for the kids um, 
and Wes. So we look forward to that with the kids this afternoon. So I think that's everything. Awesome. Okay, let's sing our final song together. I serve a risen saviour, he is in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. Let's be upstanding as we sing our song to take us out to morning tea. He's in the world today. sorry about this but I was asked to bring something to prayer and I've only just remembered it so when Kathy watches this back I am sorry um, the baby's coming so Kathy has asked for prayers that the, ba- the birth will be okay easy everything will go well she went into labor yesterday and the baby isn't here so let's keep um, Steph and Jack in our prayers today and we hope that this baby arrives safely and well Amen. In all the world around me, I see his love and care, how apt. Thank you, band, and sorry. Computer's done a weird thing, so let's have the benediction. I pray His Holiness will fall upon you, that you will find Him in your greatest joy and in your darkest night, that our Lord Jesus Christ will be at the centre of your thoughts and in the going before you, behind you, and beside you. Amen. <laughs>